Hello and welcome to Bite Size Tech. I'm your host, Rogue, and today a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. Tech has more information and a special sign up offer at the end of this video. Mr. Trex comes in with a question regarding PC building and upgrades. He does. It says he has a PC with a 10700KF with a 3090. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, hoping to upgrade to older like DDR5 when it comes. He recently got a deal on the 10850K, the 10 core uh, 20 thread uh, chip for 300. And he wants to know if he should still get older like. He plays 1440p, 244 hertz, esports and some AAA games. Uh oh, there's silence from the galley. Mr. Trex. Let's take a walk. Let's have a chat, shall we? I'm not even going to take it for a walk. We're just going to have oh, a chat. We're just going to sit down right here. We're just going to sit down right here. <laughs> because this is called Missing the Obvious. Without looking back at it, my love. Yes. What's wrong with everything he just said? Well, let's see. 1440p, uh, 244 her, uh, 240 hertz on a 10700 KF. And he's got a 3090. Yeah, that's all great. That's missing it though. 10850K. I heard it. How much RAM does he have? Oh, 16 gigs of RAM. He has a $3,000 video card. That's what they're worth at the moment. And he has 16 gigs of RAM. Would you like to go back to 16 gigs of RAM? No. You've done that. I've you've done gone that. from 16 to 32. Yep. And then you've gone back to 16. That was bad. That was terrible. With way less hardware than that. It was. That was on my... I'm just going to call the obvious out here and say, hold on. You're, but wait, we could st stop the train here. What are you doing with 16 gigs of RAM? Now I can hear it already. But I'm just playing a few esports games. Well, first of all... 240, 240 hertz, 1440p. And he has 16 gigs of RAM. That is an <laughs> eight. <me. laughs> that is an $800 monitor yep. on a $3,000 video card, and he just got an i9 10850K. So the moral of the story: more RAM. He is a candidate for for 64. 64. Exactly. Now I was say. RAM prices have gone up recently. Let me be clear about something: 32 is understandable. 16 should not even be in your list, sir. Really. My personal gaming PC at home, I had 32. Last December, December of 2020, I upgraded it from 32 to 64, and it really does get used. Windows Windows is bloaty, Windows is a lot of crap going on, and it sort of expands to fill the available RAM, and it is beneficial. But RAM prices were cheaper in December, and they oh, cost more now. And, and I, I understand that it might seem yeah, expensive. We got 64 gigs for $165. Mr. has $3,000 video card, just bought an i9. 64 is not nuts. <laughs> 32 is reasonable. You shouldn't even be thinking about 16. The last time I had 16 gigs of RAM was in 2012. I keep seeing people think that 16 is enough. I, yeah, people like 64 for what? People people like 6 Oh, uh, have you <laughs> used 64? I have posted and posted oh and gosh. posted. I have shown what I'm running. I have shown the details. Now, not everybody needs that. I'm not saying everybody needs it. But where, where? 32 is probably where you should be at. But if you're going to pick something other than 32, you'd leap to 64. Okay. You wouldn't go down to 16. Correct. Um and, and to any of you watching who think that 16 is enough, A, do you have this level of nice hardware? Because he's got a 3090. And B, have you tried more RAM? Because I'll bet a lot of people who say 16 gigs is enough haven't used 32. I've gotten a lot of posts, just like people who upgraded their CPUs, I've seen plenty of posts from people who went from 16 to 32, and they'll be like, you know, my game's not any faster, but it's a lot smoother. Yeah. 
I'll load up a Call of Duty Warzone and it won't stutter as much because it can load all the textures and stuff into RAM. People are having trouble with the 32 to 64. What, what do you need that for? Multitasking, multiple monitors, um, background tasks. For example, on my personal gaming PC at home, which does not have anything to do with YouTube, except that I have some data stored at home, but I don't do video editing or content creation. I have OneDrive, I have G Drive syncing. So I have different file syncing running. Yep. I have my Synology NAS at the office backing up to external USB hard drives at home. Backblaze. So an offsite backup. I have Backblaze backing up over the internet. Several game launchers. I've got my main gaming monitor in front of me, and then I have a secondary monitor off to the side that I've got like a Twitch stream running or a YouTube video running while I'm playing games. I can often use 60 to 70% of the RAM in active use. And of course, it's all used in standby mode. There's no free RAM on a regular basis for 64 gigs. When I was using 32, it was 90 to 95% full, full, heavy into swap, and Windows 10 RAM compression was running. Now, not everybody has backups and syncs, and not everybody has those things in the test tray, which is why 32 is enough for most people. But he's also 1440p, 244 hertz as well. He is so far not normal. That. That's why I go to 64. Exactly. Folks, the gentleman we're talking about has a 240 hertz, 1440p yeah, monitor. But... Those are $800 monitors. He just bought an i9-10850K and has an RTX 3090 with 24 gigs of VRAM. He has 24 gigabytes of VRAM and only 16 gigs of main system RAM. Really? Really? <laughs> but why? I, I'm not saying that ever. See, here's the funny thing. If one of our viewers has an i5 10400F, 6 core 12 thread chip, and they have an RTX 3060 or 2060, and they're playing games at 1080p, even 144 hertz, I'm okay with. Because many esports games on an i5 10400F will be fine at 1080p, 144 hertz. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege, CSGO, League of Legends, they're all fine. 16 gigs. I'm okay with 16 gigs in that case. I personally would still do 32, but I am oh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't convulse at 16 gigs. Well, no, because you're matching your parts. Right. Every, everything's matched up. It's balanced. Reasonable hardware. Um... There is no excuse for an i9 10850K and an RTX 3090 to be on 16 gigs of RAM. That's just silly. Well, how answering now, now, his... Now, I'm... Right. We're going to answer his question. But the point of this is to, is to point out what was missing in the statement. Correct. Because you went through it and you read it. Yes. And then I said, so what's, what's the obvious missing? And you're focused on his question. Well, the, I was. You're focused on, okay, so this and the CPU. But the RAM, and the, yeah, you're right. And I'm like... My brain did go, oh, RAM, but I'll answer the question first. Let's, let's stop. For, okay, so we, so we answered the RAM bit. Okay, we okay. answered the RAM so, bit. RAM did, bit. Did we kill that horse? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, horse. Okay. So if you've got the 10A50K, but you've said to skip Alder Lake, and wait for it to sort itself out. I would skip Alder Lake. And the reason I would skip Alder Lake is because Alder Lake is due in the third or fourth quarter of this year. It might come October, might come September. It probably will come October. Raptor Lake, which is the second generation on LGA 1700, is due in the third quarter next year. So wait for that. Windows 11 is coming in October of this year. And so Windows 11 will have the new updated scheduler for the big little course. Z670 boards are coming out this October. But Z7... No, I said Z... 690. Thank you. Z690 boards are coming this October. Z but summer next year... 790. 790 boards are coming. And 24 core chips are coming. Or they could delay Alder Lake, but they're still going to be Alder Lake is basically done. 
Well, I, there's going to be teething issues just because it's the first iteration, and first iterations you usually have teeth, unless Pat is got his whip out and say, "Y'all are getting this right." But Pat's only been there for a few months. Exactly. This has all been put in place before he got this it, stuff. Is done years in advance. Exactly. So the likelihood that it's going to just run 100% out of the gate. It will mostly work most of the time. It well, will be pretty good, but it'll be the fussiness that. It's like the rise and in fussiness. We'll just have to wait for the updates as they come to figure it out. Every time we've talked about rise and fussiness, do we not get somebody commenting saying, well, my rise and runs fine. Everybody's always proud of saying that. Yeah, Here's yeah, the problem. Yeah, yeah. Of course it does. If it was broken for everybody, they'd never sell them. It, <laughs> exactly. Of course it works fine mostly most of the time. The reason why we've pitched Intel so much in the past couple of years, I love Ryzen. We have a lot of Ryzen it systems. It just works because it's a mature platform and now they're going to rip out the carpet and you're going to have a whole new platform and it's not going to be what she said as reliable as it once was give them a refresh before yep. you do it exactly so let other people be the guinea pigs so you're either okay to be the guinea pig or you're not but you got the 10850k you've bought it so skip all the like if you were to answer his question absolutely are you kidding your 10850k will be fine between now and next summer, literally it's one year. It's not gonna be that long. You'll, you'll, you'll be fine with your 10 core, 20 thread, 5.2 gigahertz processor. <laughs> <laughs> He'll live. Are uh, you sure? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Just upgrade your RAM. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cashback that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no sign-up fee, no credit checks, no interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money anywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. You heard me right. Use your new crypto visa card to pay for your subscriptions and get 100% back in rewards. Earning 8% on your new visa card is awesome, but how would you like to earn up to 14% interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating to feel like your money is just parked. Yes, you really can earn up to 14% annual interest on your crypto paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like. The interest is paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you are in Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you are in Ethereum, and so on. Flexible terms are offered, including zero lock, so you can withdraw your crypto anytime you like without restrictions, or you can hold for one or three month terms for a higher rate of return. Of course, you can buy, sell, and exchange 100 plus cryptocurrencies with 20 plus fiat currencies using bank transfers or your credit and debit card at true cost. Crypto.com is first and foremost, a crypto exchange. There is so much more to explore, I have barely scratched the surface. DeFi features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders, crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks, crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens, crypto pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and you earn up to 10% back in rewards, and that's not even everything they have to offer. If you're looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link in the video description below to sign up today, you'll get a $25 crypto sign up bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and it gets you a great offer to get started in the world of crypto.